Welcome to Ertztal Valley and the World Cup Finals of the Natural Track Losers in Umhausen, Austria. Today, we'll look behind the scenes of the doubles and the women's singles competition. And we'll be right in the middle of the fight for the coveted Crystal Globes. The picturesque village of Umhausen is located one hour from Innsbruck in the Ötztal Valley. Here the extremely demanding 955 meter long Grantaubahn track winds through the forests. Today, two athletes have entered the commentator's box to explain the track. Hi, so I'm here with uh, Jack Leslie, the uh, World Cup leader from 2016 junior and also second place in the Junior World Championships at Latch in Italy this year. And this is Sam Bunt, Sam Bud, the number one Great Britain slider. So at the start hat you say my qualification, I did three pedals just like that and I crashed out the, out the start on the wall. <laughs> so coming down into the first corner here you can see it's setting up for the break and it's going to finish nice and wide because it's really important to finish wide here. You're going to be really inside at the beginning of the corner and finish out, create a lot of speed and through this little S bit you're going to find the shortest line so you want to be on the outside and inside the mount. So here's quite an important corner, you need to turn a little bit late and work quite a lot at the start and then be nice and tight to that board and then finish wide to carry enough speed into yeah, the middle you combination. Got, you've got an intermediate time just here and then a very big combination here. You've got to work a lot at the beginning as you can see there, almost finish in the middle and then you've got to come around and then finish wide here. Yeah, so here's quite a tricky corner here because you've got a little kink before the break, so you break it at a bit of an angle and then you've got more of a turn, but it's finished nice and wide there and carrying a lot of speed on the straight. Yeah, so um, I've been told by a lot of people and I know personally this is the most important corner. So you've got to go late work a lot at the beginning, maybe a little bit more than he does and you've got to come, come wide and create a lot of speed for this little straightaway here because there's a long corner up ahead. So this last corner, you don't want to turn in too tightly, as you can see he was pushed out wide to the outside board. Yeah, so from the forerunner of, um, of the World Cup finale, he had a pretty clean run, he'd be pretty happy with it. Yeah, I think so too. Before we find out more about the results of the first competition, let's have a look at the meticulous approach of two brothers who became Vice European Champions just two weeks ago. Hello, I'm Christian Schopf, and I'm Andy Schopf, and we're riding the doubles together. First, we walk the track together and analyze everything, including how we want to ride, and then we begin with our warm-up training, which is very important to mobilize our muscles. We do it extensively. After the warm-up, we discuss the track together, have a look at the most important points, for example, braking points, entry points, or what we should do at the beginning of the corners, how much speed we can build up, when exactly we can build that speed. We analyze everything very precisely and go through the whole thing very accurately. I buckle up the strap in front that's similar to a seatbelt in a car so I can't lose it during the descent. And in the back I've got a pair of jeans with Velcro attached. The Velcro counterpart is attached to the canvas of the luge, it gives me a better hold. You need to have the weight in the front of the luge in order to ride the corners well. That's why it's an advantage if the heavier guy sits in front. You just have more downforce. The one in the back only needs to bring some weight with him and then make the speed. It's perfect if the difference in weight between the man in front and back is about 15 to 20 kilos. There are two men on the luge and each one has to adjust to the other. It's certainly an advantage to be related to one another. We try to harmonize as well as possible. This usually works out fine. In winter, we understand each other 90%. Apart from some small details, it all works out quite well. But today, the strong competition in their Austrian team has stolen the starting place in the finals from the Schaff brothers. The decisive race will take place without them. 
It's already clear that Pignet or Clara have won the overall ranking, but the other ranks are still open. Regensburger Holzknecht are in second, but Ergerov Popov and Brugler Angerer aren't far behind. After the qualification run, Pignet or Clara are in front. They'll be the last to start in the finals. Brugler Angerer in fourth place today, and they're only 16 points behind. And third in the overall ranking are Ergorov Popov. In the finals, the Russians need to defend their fifth place if they don't want to lose their third place in the overall cup. Alexander Ergorov and Peter Popov give everything, doing well on the demanding track and its long corners. They don't make any crucial mistakes and show a solid run. The Russians are slower than in the qualification run, though, but still strong enough to take the lead. Now, they'll have to wait and see how Brugler and Angerer will do. The Austrians have been on the podium three times this year so far. At this last World Cup race of the season, they're extremely motivated to attack once again. Rupert Brugler and Tobias Angerer are only 0.24 seconds out of third place, and in the finals, they show a strong run, confidently overcoming all difficulties and finding the racing line. They beat Ergerov Popov's split times easily. Brugler and Angerer fly down to the finish where they're welcomed by a great result. They've taken the lead and even topped their qualification time. But will this be enough to push Ergerov and Popov from the overall World Cup podium? Now comes the next Russian pairing, the highly successful mainstays Washnev Lazarev. After a failed start into the season, this duo has recently moved up a notch. They got a medal at the European Championships two weeks ago, and here in Umhausen, they're third after the qualification. Riding very confidently, Pavel Poshnev and Ivan Lazarev master the challenging Grantau track and extend their lead over Brugler Angerer. In the end, they're faster than in the qualification run. A new best time and first place for Poshnev Lazarev. How will Regensburger and Holzknecht react to this fantastic performance by the Russians? The young Austrians took third place at the overall World Cup in the previous year, and they're eager to reach the podium again this time. Their lead over the Russians is 0.26 seconds. In the upper curves, Christoph Regensburger and Dominik Holzknecht perform very well. Coordination and speed are fine. In the middle part, they even extend their lead and can already hope for the silver medal. But in the last part of the track, they simply lack speed. At the finish line, they're only 0.24 seconds back, but it's still enough to reach the podium, though, which also means they secure second place in the overall World Cup. Next up, the Italian duo of Pignator Clara. They've been in a class of their own this season. Nobody has been able to beat them. And once again, they're in the lead today at 0.46 seconds faster in the qualification than their opponents. After a perfect start, they take their first corner with ease. As usual, the two men from South Tyrol work together perfectly. Their timing at the first key part is perfect as well. Rushing through the corners cleanly. Effortlessly, Patrick Pignitter and Florian Clara beat the split times of the leading Russians. In the lower part, they also don't make any mistakes. In the end, they're nearly one second faster than Porshnev Lazarev, who had a strong run themselves. Once again, an exemplary run by the Italian masters who've won everything this season from the European Championships to the World Cup. This has been our final objective, to win all six races plus the championship. We've never accomplished that before. We had won all the races before, but not the championship. Now we've reached our goal, and that shows how good we've been and how consistently we've performed. Pozhnev Lazarev from Russia take to the podium for the second time this season, and Regensburger Holzknecht from Austria for the third time. Pignator Clara win the overall World Cup for the eighth time. In second place, it's Regensburger Holzknecht, and in third, Egorov Popov. Their fifth place today was enough to defend against the attack by Brugler and Angerer.
Now it's time for the ladies. While the losers prepare for the decisive run, let's have a look at the overall ranking. Evelyn Lantaler already took the overall win at the last stage in Deutsch Nofen, but behind her, it's still very exciting. There's only five points respectively between Tina Unterberger, Ekaterina Lavrentieva, and Greta Pingera. At the previous race in Deutsch Nofen, Pingera took second place. This success now gives her the chance to take a place on the overall podium. We talked to the young Italian in Deutsch Nofen. Hello, I'm Greta Pinguera. I'm 21 years old and I'm a natural track loser. For me, this is the best sport in the world. It just gives you a rush to race over the ice. And success proves her right. She took second in the European Championships this year, third in the World Championships last year, and she got third at the overall World Cup twice. She has never won a World Cup race, though. I put a lot of pressure on myself, considering that I'm the youngest on our team. I'm in a team with Evelyn and all the guys, and they're much more experienced than I am. That means I have to try to be up there with them. This has had an effect on my success. To deal with this pressure is a problem I still have to work on. But Pingera also knows that she's very talented. In order to tap her full potential, she works together with a former track and field athlete. This year, mental training has pushed me a lot. It changed my attitude, and the coaches now tell me that I develop a lot of speed when I'm leaving the corners. It could be a huge advantage if I manage to implement this in the races as well. Pingera wants to stay highly motivated, but has also scaled down her expectations. I do one race after the other now, no matter if it's about the first victory at a World Cup race or the World Championship. I'll just wait and see. I'll take it as it comes. Back to Umhausen, where Unterberger, Pingera, and Lavrentieva prepare for the thrilling triple header for two remaining places on the overall World Cup podium. After the qualification, it's down to a three-way duel. Pingera's in the lead, Lavrentieva in third, and Unterberger is already two seconds back. The Austrian blew it in the qualification run, and now she has no chances of reaching the podium any longer. She doesn't make any mistakes in the final run, though, but she's a lightweight, and that's a disadvantage on the Grand Tau track with its numerous straights. If the women in the lead don't fail completely, the Austrian will lose her place on the World Cup podium at the last race of the season, just like in the previous year. Michelle Diepold recently became junior world champion in Lach, South Tyrol. At the qualification run for the World Cup finals, she took sixth place. And the 19-year-old delivers a nearly flawless race in the upper and middle parts. But at the penultimate corner, she touches the wall, loses speed and her sixth place. That means Unterberger climbs up one place. Sarah Bachmann is the first of three South Tyrolians within the top five. She has a 0.56 second lead over Unterberger. Bachmann masters the difficult passages in the upper part confidently and finds a fast line through the following curves. The 21-year-old loses a bit of speed in the middle part but takes back the lead in the lower sections. With a lead of more than one second, she takes first place away from Unterberger. Next up is young German Teresa Maurer. At the Junior World Championships, she took second place behind Michelle Diepold. She had a fantastic qualification run, being 0.33 seconds faster than Sarah Bachmann. Maurer's timing in the first corner is excellent, and she continues her great performance in the midsection. But like Diepold, she touches the wall in the penultimate corner. Bachmann stays in front, while Maurer will probably end up fifth. Still a great performance by the 17-year-old, though. Now in the starting gate, Ekaterina Lavrentieva. 
The Russian has won the overall World Cup 11 times so far. This year, she's been dethroned for the first time in 10 years. She has a 0.55 second lead over Bachmann. In the upper and the middle sections, Lavantieva rides aggressively and fully in control, continuously extending her lead. In the lower part, she puts the pedal to the metal, taking the fastest time of the day so far and robbing a whole second from Bachmann. Now, Lavrentieva throwing down the gauntlet to Lantaller and Pinguera. How will the overall World Cup winner, reigning European and world champion Evelyn Lantaller answer? The Italian is eager to bring her fantastic season to a fitting end. In the qualifier, she was 0.22 seconds faster than Lavrentieva. Lantaller takes the challenging first corners brilliantly. Thanks to a smart choice of line, she stays in front. But in the lower part, Lavrentieva showed an extraordinary performance. But at the finish line, Lantaller is only in second place behind the Russian, losing half a second to her opponent. Despite that, Lantaller is the only woman to reach the podium in all races of this season. And now, it's up to Greta Pinguera. The 21-year-old hopes for her first ever win at a World Cup race. At the qualifier, she had an incredibly fast ride, taking a 0.80 second lead over Lavantieva. And Pinguera stands up to the pressure, riding the racing line flawlessly and constantly building speed in the upper and middle parts. Elegantly, she takes the penultimate corner and stays in the lead right up to the finish line. She can't beat Lavantieva's fantastic time of 1.16, but on a day like this, Pinguera doesn't care about that. Finally, I've been waiting for this for so long. Again and again, I just missed out, but today it worked out at last. I was very relaxed during the ride. I knew it was possible to win, and I also knew it was still about the podium in the overall World Cup. It all worked perfectly today. The three strongest women of the winter on the podium, Pingera, Lavrentieva, and last but not least, Lantaler. Here are the results again. A fabulous fifth place for Teresa Maurer and Tina Unterberger, missing the overall podium with sixth place. Evelyn Lantaller finally gets the coveted trophy for the win in the overall World Cup. Thanks to her outstanding performance today, her teammate Greta Pingera takes second place. And Ekaterina Lavrentieva finishes third. For the third time since 2005, the Russian hasn't won the overall title. So the men's singles are the last category to compete today. Italian Patrick Pigneter leads the overall World Cup ranking. Alex Gruber is 46 points back and another 50 points back. Local hero Thomas Kammerlander is in third. I think we're all equal at the moment. Thomas won the previous race and Alex the race before and I won the race before that. We've taken turns so far this season, so it'll be a tight battle today, for sure. Thomas knows this track perfectly. He knows every corner inside out. That's an advantage for sure. It's the track where he learned to lose. That's perfect for him. Patrick and I will have to give everything to leave him behind. Umhausen is more than a normal World Cup race. It's the World Cup race. Everyone is eager to put himself into the Hall of Fame waiting at the finish. I've had this honor once so far back in 2007, and it's time to repeat it. After the qualification run, Thomas Kammerlander is in the lead. Pegner is 0.26 seconds back, and Clara in third. Gruber only fourth. 
The losers are starting in reverse order. Florian Glatzel has improved a lot this season, but the 22-year-old has never reached the podium. Today, he's half a second away from third place. He gets his foot under one of the runners, but he's lucky. This mishap didn't have any impact on his speed, and Glatzel is still in the lead. And he's fast in the lower part as well. In the end, he's even faster than he was during qualification. Now, getting ready at the starting gate, Stefan Federer from Italy. He's in fifth place after the qualification, but it's only a 10 hundredths lead over Glatzel. The 26-year-old athlete was born in the same village as Patrick Pigneter. After a weak start, he takes the first corner skillfully and extends his lead. He's not distracted by the snowfall at all. At the finish, he's half a second faster than in the qualifier. Now, Alex Gruber, the 23-year-old student from South Tyrol, is certainly not content with the thankless fourth place, and he's risking everything, as he's only 10 points in front of Kammerlander in the overall World Cup. Gruber touching the wall there, but not losing control or too much time. Unfazed, he takes the tight corners in the middle part, full throttle. Gruber extends his lead to 0.94 seconds, securing second place in the overall World Cup. Florian Clara is in third with big chances of reaching the singles podium for the first time this season. But Gruber showed a strong performance and Clara is only 0.17 seconds in front. So the South Tyrolean goes all out. The riding the first corners flawlessly, he's slower than Gruber and loses his lead. In the end, Florian Clara shows a good run and beats his own qualification time, but it's not enough to push Gruber from the top. Clara being 0.12 seconds back. Now he can only hope that his opponents make mistakes. But first, he compliments Gruber on his brilliant run. Now, it's up to the leader in the overall ranking, Patrick Pigneter. The Italian only needs to complete his run without serious mistakes. Then, he'll be the overall World Cup winner for the 11th consecutive time. And as usual, Pigneter is fast. Though not riding as aggressively as his teammate Gruber, he doesn't make any mistakes and stays in control. In the snow flurry, his lead melts down to 0.23 seconds, but it's still enough to take the lead. But will it also be enough to upset the local hero at the last minute? Thomas Kammerlander already showed in the qualifier that he wants to win and nothing else. But his lead isn't too big. He only has 0.29 seconds to defend. Two weeks ago, the 25-year-old won the European Championships. Today, he dominates his home track. The Austrian speeds over the ice, beating all split times, and is obviously enjoying it all the way to the finish line. He's even able to extend his lead to 0.69 seconds. For the sixth time this season, he reaches the podium, taking the second win in a row. His brother and national coach, Gerald, is stoked. The win at the European Championships really motivated me, and I probably laid the foundation yesterday when I took a lead of three-tenths. I went into the race in a very cool mood and managed to pull off a great run. I think that's a nice lead over Patrick for once. Pigneter is in second, while Gruber has climbed from fourth to third place. Florian Clara has to be content with fourth place while Stefan Federer completes the Italian dominance.
Patrick Pignetter is presented with his 11th Crystal Globe in a row, making him the most successful natural track loser of all time. Apart from one race, I've always been on the podium this year, never lower than second place, so it was a huge season for me once again. Alex Gruber takes second place for the second time in a row, and Thomas Kammerlander is in third. With all the places in the overall World Cup having been decided, the natural track lose season is over, but starts again in December.